Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to Boondockery. A little over a year ago, I tried my hand at walnut dyeing, heavy duty nylon, <laughs> uh, US GI surplus equipment. And um, as you can see, it didn't turn out as well as my ACUs that were originally UCP. Uh, it turned out an incredibly dark red brown. Now, this bothered me. <laughs> uh, my original experiment with this turned out a little bit dark, but I made a few, I guess, strategic errors in my dyeing process, and everything turned out ridiculously dark for my neck of the woods in the fall and winter. And that was the reason I was walnut dyeing it, is to get it to blend in a little bit better during this time of year. Well, this has bothered me for some time, and throughout the year I've tried different things to try to break this great big dark mass up in a way to where it would still be functional and um, be able to blend in just a little bit better. So today's video is going to be focusing on those early attempts at changing this for the better, and at least in my humble opinion for the better, and also to show you the results of one technique that I discovered that I think works okay. Now, like I said, the original pouches and everything, like, you know, the backpack, it has turned out like ridiculously dark. And um, I know I have seen a lot of people on YouTube um, spray paint nylon gear and equipment, and they're very, very pleased with it. I have tried it in the past, and what I have found is it takes a tremendous amount of prepping uh, you have to sort of rough up the surface of the nylon which frays it out a good little bit and you have to saturate it and it takes a lot of spray paint to saturate you know Kodora nylon it just it takes a lot of paint and what normally happens even if you have um, the 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 colors that you want, the patterns that you want, and it blends in really well, it creates a surface texture that is very, very rough, and it actually makes the nylon louder when you go through brush. And at least that's what I found when I tried it. So I wasn't a fan of it, and I didn't do it anymore. So I was playing around with a lot of ideas, and I was thinking, well, you know, how about using like acrylic paint? Just try acrylic paint. You know, I can mix it any color I want. It's real, relatively cheap, cheap. It's flexible, and it might not have the same surface quality that you know I didn't really care for with the spray paint. So I tried it out, and I was I was you can see in the background. I mean, it kind of blends a little bit, and um, so. I was sort of pleased with this, at least pleased well enough uh, to uh, you know continue on with a few more experiments. And I was thinking, well, there might be a way that I could start off with this and maybe add a few other colors, or to try to find a way to break up the pattern just a little bit. And put it in here real close so you can see it. Here at the very bottom, I tried putting another color in there, and I kind of like the effect, but at a distance, you can't see it. And then when I got it out in the sunlight, I noticed that those second coats, the heavier coats, they were reflective. They weren't flat. But those first coats, I mean, they worked out pretty well. And um, so I painted quite a few of these pouches. And believe it or not, because you have to really work that acrylic paint 
into these fibers to get it to hold like this, it was taking a lot of time. And uh, I'm like, if it's taking me this long to do these pouches, <laughs> I can't imagine how long it would take to do a backpack. So, oh, I was, I was frustrated. So, of course, it, it went on the back burner for a good little while, collecting some dust. And I just happened to see uh, a YouTube video go up and people were spray painting their outdoor furniture cushions with this new spray paint. Now, it may not be new, but it was new to me. And supposedly, this spray paint doesn't have any of the texture issues and it stays soft. And, you know, the color lasts for a really long time. I, you know, the, the one video I watched, it was actually a follow-up to the first one and then I wound up watching it. But it was a follow-up to show what they looked like after a year of being in the elements nonstop. And it worked out really well. So <laughs> I said, okay, I'm in. So I started doing a little research. I found the different companies that manufacture uh, fabric spray paint. Rust-Oleum was the one I went with. They had two colors that I, I you know, decided, yeah, that, that those would probably work. One was khaki and one was olive green. And um, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. And um, so I got them and I tried them out. And this was just like spraying over one of the little pouches that I experimented with. And I kind of liked how it faded it all out. However, the only spots that were sort of like, um, I, I want to say darker, but more intense as far as the, the color tones go, were where I had already experimented with the acrylic paint. And then I got a couple little drops uh, of, of paint from the, the spray can. I was trying to play around with, you know, some type of stenciling or something like that. And so I was liking this, but I was thinking if I were to do everything like this, that's going to turn from a very dark blob in the woods to a fairly light blob in the woods. So I was thinking, okay, let's go ahead and break up that pattern. And so I tried another pouch just like that one, except this time I made masks with just torn um, painter's tape. And this is what came out. And um, so I went out in the yard and I threw everything that I had been playing with in the leaves. And um, I looked at it and I said, you know, that could work. That could work. So that is what I decided to go with. I'm going to go ahead and do a layout of all these in the leaves so you can see how well they blend. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit more about that spray paint. Okay, this is the original UCP uh, pattern. As you can see, it does not blend at all with the leaves. Now, one small pouch of that dark brown, it doesn't look bad at all. But when you have a harness with pouches and a backpack, or whatever else that you're going to be using in that really dark brown, as you saw from the intro, it stands out. It really stands out. And the acrylic paint, as you can see with the contrast here, it's a little light. The one that I originally experimented with with the spray paint, I mean, it blends in really, really well. But when you were to magnify the size of that coloration, the size of a backpack, a chest rig, a harness, uh, all kinds of extra pouches and things like that, that's going to stand out to be a fairly light uh, shade. And I wasn't exactly certain that I was going to be able to use uh, stencils and things like that in order to... Uh, break it up a little bit, get that modeling effect without making it too light. And um, there was another uh, experiment I did a little bit later on 
And as a matter of fact, I'll show that to you. It was this one here, and I tried different layerings of uh, spray paint and stencils over that basic um, masking that I had put on, and um, it's pretty bright. When this is out by itself, I mean, it's it stands out pretty bright. It wasn't too bad because there's just a couple spots. I'm still going to be able to use it, but as you can see, it definitely stands out more than this one. This one mutes it just enough, uh, I think, to make it a little less intrusive. Now, I was going to tell you about the spray paint. Uh, the khaki, by uh, spraying different layers on there, you go from you can't see it at all to you see it a little bit, okay, I'm starting to see it fairly well, all the way to where it's really that light. If Actually, it's, it's brighter. Uh, than this color here and uh, and I was all excited because I was thinking well we have a lot of green in our forest here we have green briar we have a lot of evergreen type uh, vegetation and I'm thinking yeah I'll go ahead and use olive green to do that well unfortunately uh, from all the images I saw online it looked like olive green but when uh, you spray it out it's brighter than this green and um, so I wound up buying quite a few cans of this in preparation for this project and unless I find something else that I want to spray paint that I'm not really going to use in the woods but I, I want a really really intense bright olive-ish more it's more of an avocado green than it is an olive green um, this was way too bright and uh, so I wound up not using that in uh, my, my project. So wound up going with this. This worked well enough. And um, I, was, I was pleased well enough to pursue it. And the more I produced, the more I liked it. Now I'm going to show you and walk you through all the steps that I did to uh, break up that big brown blob of a backpack and I'm going to show you the results of all of the other things that I spray painted with this pattern. Before we actually get into all the prepping and all the painting I just want to go through a real quick recap. Now this is the ACU uniform shirt in UCP that started it all. I walnut dyed this a couple years ago, thought it absolutely turned out fantastic. About a year later, I presented a class on walnut dyeing at the Central Ohio Bushcraft Gathering, and in that time I tried an experiment by walnut dyeing nylon pouches in UCP. Now, this is what UCP looks like. As you can tell, there is a huge difference. In the fall, in my neck of the woods, this is absolutely amazing. I've not yet found anywhere that I hike, I camp, I bushcraft, I hunt, I do anything to where UCP is effective. So I walnut dyed one of these pouches and it turned out like this. And I was very, very intrigued. You can see this matches up fairly close to the shirt that I had dyed. So I went ahead and went whole hog and bought a few hundred dollars worth of UCP nylon gear. A couple packs, all kinds of pouches, a harness, you name it. I, bu I bought it. And I walnut dyed it. And because <laughs> my quality control was not what it should have been. They did not turn out like this. They turned out like this. Very, very, very dark. Just about everything turned out this color. And when I walk through the woods in the fall, I look like a giant turd walking through the forest. 
and this is so dark it really stands out and um, I was very unpleased with it so that's what led me to experimenting with all the experiments I've already shared with you and has led me to do what I'm about to do which is using fabric spray paint to break up the pa a, a pattern on these actually create a pattern and create the majority of these pouches backpacks everything else into a color tone that will more readily fit up with my walnut dyed clothing it's not an exact match but it's a whole lot better let's go ahead and get things started now at the point i'm filming this particular shot i have already painted everything else that i had purchased this is going to be the last item that i choose to paint i still have one more backpack the black hawk pack and at this point i'm going to see how this medium molly two pack uh, goes and if it goes well i'm going to take the time to do it because it takes a very long time to do the number of items that i've done so far this is what i'm going to be using i've got my walnut dyed uh, molly two medium rucksack i have the uh, rust-oleum fabric paint and khaki I have frog tape, two inch wide, one and a half inch wide, and um, I also have a respirator, and I'm going to be doing this in a very well ventilated room. Uh, matter of fact, the exhaust fan that is going to be above me, it's about this wide, about this big around, about this deep, believe me. When I walk into the room, I feel the air rushing past me to go up this. So if you're going to be doing this indoors, make certain that you have it well ventilated, not just because of the harmful vapors, because of course your, your ventilator can take care of that. However, these particles, particulates of paint, uh, as they spray out because you're going to be doing this at a little bit of a distance a lot of those will float freely in the air and they wind up going everywhere so if you have a very well ventilated room it's going to pull those out and um, so you, you don't want to be doing this in an area to where you're going to be worried about you know the particulates of the paint settling down uh, by the time it reaches the floor, you know, the, the ones I've been doing, it sweeps up pretty easily because it's completely dry. But it, it's going to accumulate if you have a lot of stuff to do like I have. Now, when I start prepping this, just like I have with every single thing I've done so far, I'm going to be stuffing this thing, just like I did my pouches, I'm going to cram it with whatever I could, blocks of wood, uh, little uh, plastic shopping bags, anything I could to stuff in the interior spaces of these to fill them out. Because you need to have a fairly flat, somewhat rigid surface for the tape to be able to adhere to. So I brought in just about every single <laughs> um, type of uh, a Wubby or Swagman Roll or a Osni or anything I have that's big and fluffy that I can pack and compress inside these. I have the main compartment and I have an external pocket here that I want to fill to the point to where it looks like there's an internal form in here to where it's as smooth and as compact and uh, rigid as I can possibly make a flexible backpack. Now, if you're going to be doing this and you have uh, compression straps or anything like that uh, on the side, you're definitely going to want to undo all of those because you want this thing to be able to be stuffed as full as it can possibly be stuffed. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stuff my Swagman roll into the front pouch. I don't think there'll be much of a problem with it all fitting in, but um, if there's anything, any 
space left inside of it, I'm going to need to uh, find something smaller to uh, stuff in here. Now this will be the first backpack that uh, I've tried this with. Everything else has been pouches. That looks pretty good. Now I'm not going to be too concerned about if this is super, super tight right now because I still have the interior space to fill and compress, which will actually press out on this. But as you can see, I want to get all the corners out that I possibly can. That's, that's fairly good. I might find a couple other little things to put in there. As you can see, it's a very well-defined space. It's filled out pretty well. I'll shove a few other things in here, and I'll go ahead and go do the same thing with the internal space, with everything I brought, and maybe a couple of little other things that I may need. And then, and I will show you what it looks like as soon as I have it completely stuffed. Now it's completely <laughs> stuffed. I was mistaken. There was not one exterior pouch. There is two. And I was able to get enough stuff in here to where it is completely stuffed and as rigid as it's going to be. My next step is going to be to mask off all the buckles uh, because the buckles aren't that intrusive of a color. Um, compared to everything else, which is UCP. And the khaki paint has a tendency of covering uh, regular plastic very, very well and very, very quickly. And as a result, it's way too bright and way too light. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, mask off all the plastic that's on here and uh, once I have all that done then I'm going to be ready to start tearing and applying the tape to create the pattern. Now this was the easy part, this was the fast part. I have all the buckles, all the plastic, any zippers that are exposed, I have everything taped up. And like I said, this was the easy, fast part. It took me anywhere between 20 minutes to a half an hour just to do this. The marathon will begin next. Now, as far as a pattern goes, all I want to do is break this thing up. So it's, it's not going to be much of a pattern per se like I do when I uh, spray paint my multicam-esque patterns. That, that's very involved, takes a lot of time, but I have a lot of colors I can work with. This, one color, and the varying degrees of that color is going to be determined by the amount of layers that I put on this. Now, when I dyed this, there are certain areas that are a little darker than others. There's a very uneven dye and some of those colors are a lot lighter than the others. I really am concerned about breaking up the darker colors and trying to expose some of the lighter colors that look pretty good. And so all I'm going to be doing is tearing strips of tape and applying them down. And um, then once I have it completely covered with the amount of tape that I think it's going to take, then I'm going to go over and very lightly coat um, the pack a little bit at a time until I feel that the layer of the color that I desire is as close to perfect as I can get it for the environment that I'm going to be using it in. I've got my tape. i got a couple different sizes. This is the two inch. And I have a popsicle stick. This popsicle stick is going to help me burnish the tape into position. Now, as you can see, uh, this area here is fairly light. I want to cover that up as much as I can, but still keep a sense of pattern to it. And the areas that are a little darker, like these areas here, 
uh, I'll probably be putting uh, a few more uh, spots on it to really break it up. Uh, not necessarily like a stripe, but try to put a, enough layers in it to where it just looks like dark shapes as opposed to a dark field. And whereas these areas over here, they're broken up pretty well. So I want to try to uh, keep that as much as possible because this is as close to the actual walnut dime that was on my shirt as showed up. Just on the back side of that, on the other side, is a whole lot darker. So I'll be doing a little bit something different with that as I go. But this is how I've done everything so far. And so far, it has worked adequately enough for me to say, okay, this will work. This is what I need. So I've got a rectangle of green tape. I'm going to tear it at a diagonal. And I'm going to just tear this a few different times and just to be able to break that up. So I have some small pieces I can work with and some larger pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this one down right here. And that actually is working pretty well. Uh, any of the areas to where it looks like it's going to want to pop up, I just use this popsicle stick to sort of like furnish that down a little bit to try to get it to adhere a little bit better. Now, since this is uh, fabric, it's not going to be perfect by any means. So I've got a couple of these other little shapes that I'm going to be applying to these. So that way it just creates more of a breakup and creates shapes of darkness as I'm going. And they're going to be completely uneven, completely sporadic. And some spots are going to have more of these on than others, but definitely the areas that are darkest, I'm probably going to cover it up a good bit more and uh, really emphasizing to get you know that dark exposed in the gaps as opposed to the lighter ones. This is as far as I'm going to take the masking. I've got roughly about one third of the surface covered up, maybe up to half, but um, I'm going to go ahead and transport this into uh, my spray area and we're going to go ahead and start slapping some paint to this. Hopefully it turns out as well as my pouches. Okay, here we go. This is a uh, quite painstaking in that you have to really take your time with layering this. And it's dry to the touch in about 15 minutes. That completely cures overnight. Go ahead and uh, take a look at that. You can see the difference just between that right there and the darker area. You notice I'm keeping a little bit of distance, probably about uh, 12 to 15 inches away from it because I just want to sort of allow some of that dark to come through because the paint itself is very, very light. You can see how light it is on the masking tape and I want to maintain that. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around. I mean, I'm even going to do the straps and we're going to see how it turns out. Now the first base coat that's put on, you can see it's, it's tan. Right now, that took a little bit of doing to get it to this color. Now the next coat that I put on this, I have to be really careful with because it's really going to lighten up quickly. This first base layer uh, more or less put a, a primer down on the fabric. And uh, so each consecutive coat I put on it and allow it to dry, it'll be exponentially lighter until it would match the color that's on the tape, which is a little too light for my purposes. This is just about the coat that I want 
as far as the, the color level goes. I uh, don't want to push it too much further, but the one thing I decided to do, I'm going to just wing it and try it, but I cut a bit of a stencil, and I'm going to hit this just a couple more times in a couple spots just to get a couple hard edges of a lighter color, just to see how it turns out. Let's do it to it. Okay, this is pretty much where I think I'm going to stop with it. I brought my uh, ACU UCP shirt in so you can get an idea as to the gradation. And uh, it's fairly close. I know it's sort of difficult to see because of the brightness of the, of the mask. But when I'm comparing it to the brown or what used to be brown, um, that's a pretty close mix. If anything, I'm hoping it's going to be just a tiny little bit on the dark side, but I'd rather have it just a little bit too dark than too light. Uh, just as long as it's lighter and blends better in the woods than the great big brown mass that it was before, I'll be happy. I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for about a half an hour, and then it should be uh, dry enough and be able to take the mask off. Okay. It's uh, been a half an hour. Let's see if, uh, how she looks. Well, this is how it turned out, and um, for the most part, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, this side a little bit lighter than this side, but it turned out pretty well. Uh, hopefully, uh, the breakup pattern that I, I made on this is going to be sufficient enough to make it less intensely dark um, in my autumn forests. This is the shirt that I walnut dyed. As you can see, the um, warm gray value um, turned out fairly close. And so I, I'm pretty pleased with it uh, so far. Um, just a reminder, this is how dark it was before I did the spray painting. And I was able to do all the straps, even the webbing, uh, turned out, I think, uh, pretty good all the way around. And uh, I personally feel that this is going to be an improvement uh, once I get it in the woods. And um, I want to go ahead and do a quick uh, layout of everything that I've uh, painted like this. So you can see just um, how much work that I've been doing on this. I know it's uh, going to be very difficult to see because everything's blending together because of the pattern, which is excellent as long as this pattern blends well in the woods. Uh, I, I have a harness. I have uh, three magazine pouches. I still have one more that I'm going to be uh, painting, but I need that for an example for um, another segment of this video uh, so you can you know, have a comparison between how this turned out and the um, uh, original dark brown. Uh, I don't know what pouches these are. I thought that they were originally uh, tourniquet pouches, but they are a little narrow. So I don't know if these are. You've got uh, grenade pouches, got this little wallet thing. I don't even know what that is. Uh, 100 round uh, mag pouch. This was one of my first experiments trying to get varying degrees of the um, tan to come through and this one obviously uh, got a lot lighter than what I intended uh, 
two 200 round saw pouches, radio pouch, and uh, of course, the backpack. So, the next time you see this, I'm going to have it all put together and I'm going to be wearing it in the woods. Before I do, just one more quick reminder. This is what it looked like. Everything looked like before. Well, folks, as you can see, this is by no means perfect. However, I personally think it's a whole lot better than that uber turd brown that just was one big brown mass that was very easily distinguished in the woods. And... Um, even though it's not perfect, in my humble opinion, it's better than it was. Like I said, this is by no means perfect. However, in my humble opinion, it breaks it up sufficiently enough to where it's not as obvious as it was. And uh, using the fabric spray paint was very easy. It works great. Um, you have to layer it on, which I like that, because you can get varying degrees of intensity in whatever color you're using, and just by layering it. I like that. The fabric is soft to the touch. It does not change the surface texture one iota, and as you can see, it's not reflective. Uh, the only big drawback is that the only color that I could find that I thought would be a woodsy type color was khaki. I thought I was going to be able to use the olive green, but it was more of a fluorescent-esque type color green, and it was just way too bright for me to use it. But the application was great. Um, being able to uh, model the intensity of the color just by the layering, it was great. Uh, excellent. Um, I would have no problem whatsoever with any of my darker green type things being able to break that up just a little bit by uh, maybe doing some stenciling over it just with uh, some lines or whatever, different types of shapes to break those up. Matter of fact, um, I only have a couple things made by uh, Snug Pack that are a multicam-esque uh, pattern. Uh, it says multicam, but it, it's a little bit off. Uh, but everything else is a really dark green. I mean, a really dark green. So I very easily uh, could use that khaki to uh, break up those silhouettes of the tents, of the hammocks, of the tarps, all kinds of things with that because I have quite a few cans of this stuff left over. Um, but if you're uh, thinking about trying this yourself, uh, just keep in mind that uh, the spray paint is at least twice the, the, the price of regular spray paint. And um, it's hard to find. You'll probably have to order it. I have not found it in any stores. And, you know, just make certain that uh, as far as preparation goes, you just make certain that whatever you're spray painting is clean. And um, you shouldn't have any problem whatsoever with application. You don't have to rough up the surface with sandpaper or a scouring pad or anything like that like you usually do when you're using standard ordinary spray paint. One thing I did think of um, 
I haven't had a chance to experiment with it yet. But since there is already a coating of the fabric spray paint on the surface of all my pouches and my packs, I was playing around with the idea of making some stencils and on the areas that are khaki using a little bit of regular spray paint to just sort of break up those larger areas of the khaki with maybe a true olive drab or something like that. But it should cover on that khaki base uh, layer pretty well. If I get around to doing those experiments, I'll make another video. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.